This incantation is absolutely insane. Giant's flame take thee, fellow tarnished, and be reborn amidst the embers. This incantation, this fiery ball of explosive death, is not only deliciously fun to use, it's not only a boss melting machine, but it is the single most potent PvP tool I have come across yet that isn't an outright exploit or, you know, bleed. But before we get into why it's so ludicrously powerful, along with flame fall upon them, and seriously, I absolutely adore the flame incantation names in this game. I mean, flame fall upon them? You could have just call it like Firestorm and been like generically lame, but no, flame fall upon them. I want to take you back to, I say back, it's only Dark Souls 3, but still, I obviously, along with every Souls game, have played it multiple, multiple times for hundreds and hundreds of hours. And in that, I have always favored pyromancy. And outside of Sacred Flame, which was my favorite thing to use, the second was the Great Chaos Fire Orb. I absolutely loved it. And I was very tempted to go that pyromancy route in Elden Ring 2, but now that I've finally started properly delving into the incantations after properly plumbing the depths of sorcery, well, I'm happy to report that its spiritual successor is just so, so much better. You then cast the incantation, and you can either charge it or not. Uncharged is a smaller fireball, a smaller explosion, but obviously goes off quicker. Charged, it is a much larger fireball and a much larger explosion. Simple. Flame fall upon them. Uncharged is just a nice scattering of flames, nothing too crazy. Charged, it is essentially just an apocalyptic hellstorm of explosive fireballs. What they both have in common, apart from ludicrous damage, because fire is the single most buffable type of damage in the game, and fire incantations especially so, is they are very, very easy to hit. Cool guys look at explosions. Because they are so massive in their area of effect, and because they're so effectively free aimed. Seriously. Stop right there, criminal scum. In a lot of situations, it is better to free aim this than it is to lock on and fire normally. It gives it so much utility, especially in PvP, and it goes through walls, and it just lets you be an absolute nuisance with massive explosive fireball. So what we have essentially got here is a relatively quick to cast, massively powerful, huge area covering explosion that we can send anywhere we want, and wherever it will land, it will bring ruin to everything it touches. That is a recipe for success. And before we go over that recipe then, where do we actually get Giant's Flame Take Me from? Well, it's a uh, incantation you learn from handing in a prayer book. The Giant's Prayer Book, who would have thought? You make your way over to the Guardian's Garrison in at the mountaintops of the Giants, and head on up to the very, very tippy top, get past the little NPC miniboss that you'll find there, climb a ladder, and lo and behold, in a chest awaits your prize. Once you have got said prize, well, take it to Giant Dog Pope, have a lovely catch-up and chat, because he is the most beautiful creature in all of Elden Ring, and then you climb your new incantations. This gives you both Giant's Flame Take Thee and Flame Fall Upon Them, so that's all well and good. What we are casting this then is not just any seal, but the Flame Seal. <coughs> no, I will never stop doing that. It brings me way too much amusement. This is an absolute bastard to get, but it is definitely worth it because it gives you a plus 20% damage bonus to these flame incantations. You want to go to the giant's conquering hero's grave and also the mountaintops of the giant. You need to get to it from the upper section, even though it's technically part of the, uh, well, forbidden lands when you first go up there. And once you're in, well, you're up for quite the long path. Eventually you will go down a lift. You want to send the lift back up, which will reveal a compartment to stand in. Send the lift back 
down, get it said compartment, go down with the lift, head round up a ladder, and you'll be in a little underground room with a fire prelate, and you want to either kill him or sneak past him and claim your seal from the floor. Now, if you get two of these, one in each hand, yes, that plus 20% damage bonus stacks for a total of plus 40%. You see why this gets kind of ridiculous? In fact, let's break it down right here, now that we've got the core of this, well, setup. I, I want to call it a build, but like, it's very simple. It's just really good. So, we have two giant seals, plus 40% damage. Our talismans, then, are the Godfrey Icon for plus 15% damage on charged attacks. This is from uh, the jail in Altus Plateau, where you fight good old Godfrey. Then we have the Flame Scorpion Charm, which is an extra 12% damage on fire attacks. This is from a corpse in Fort Laid in Mount Gelmir, up at the top very easy to get a hold of. Then we have the Flock Canvas Talisman for an extra 8% damage on incantations. This is from Gowry. Once you finish the Millicent questline, either he will already be dead when you get back to him afterwards, or you will kill him and claim it, but either way, it is yours. Then in our Wondrous Physic, we of course have the Flame at Tia, which gives us an extra 20% fire damage. And then... God, it just keeps going, doesn't it? Then we top it all off with a few Select Faith buffs. Golden, I want my build to be better, please, for plus 15% damage. And then Flame, grant me strength for an extra 20% fire damage. All of this, then, is to say that this already ludicrously powerful incantation gets an extra 130% damage bump thanks to being a fire incantation and enjoying the benefits of everything we can stack to make that stronger betterer. And using this, I mean, it just feels powerful. You feel unstoppable. You feel like a flame god. It tears through bosses. It tears through levels. It is so satisfying. Giant's Flame has massive stagger knockback on it as well. So if it does connect with anything but the largest of enemies, it blows them away and lets you set up the follow-up. The utility of it from free aiming the explosion hitting through walls is so useful. The blanket of flame takes the is so good for catching people out because you have to dodge every single one of them and it's somewhat of a random pattern. The mix-up between being able to charge it and delay your blast or just quickly fire it off so you keep people guessing is wondrous. But where this really comes into its own, where this really shines, is PvP. Because yes, there are many good boss melting tools out there, but in PvP, in invading, this is just the most fun thing. Like, it's amazing. Maybe second only to inescapable frenzy, because grabbing someone is hilarious. But basically, it turns every invasion to, I just need to land this once, and everyone is dead. All of you! Does it matter? You're just, you're just dead! And the thing is, it's not hard to land. Because you can be clever with it, because you can free aim it, it's so good to play mind games. When am I gonna throw it? Where am I gonna throw it? Oh, you're gonna roll in time! And it's so satisfying. Someone could have you on the ropes, you can be injured, and then you get one cast off as they're feeling just a bit too confident, and then, pop! Oh, now they're dead. It's absolutely bloody brilliant. You don't even need a backup weapon, I'm deliberately not using one. Obviously, you could add more variety, more incantations, more options, but I just adore these invasions where I spawn in, buff up, and then play fireball catch and see who is the first to drop the ball. It's so, so satisfying and so potent, and I think this is one of the sleeper hits of Elden Ring. So Giant's Flame take me and flame fall upon them. I heartily recommend you giving it a go and seeing if you can also catch a few people off guard with monstrously powerful massive one-shot fireballs that you just keep throwing at them. Even the FP cost and faith requirement at 32 and 30 respectively is very mild and low. You really don't have to invest as I have. My stats are quite a simple spread. Obviously, I've amped faith to maximum to get the most punch out of this, but if your purpose is just PvP, you don't need that much damage. You could stay at 60 or so and invest the rest in vigor or endurance if you want heavy your armor. I kind of like using the flame giant's enemies. There's a more chest, ironically, in a flame giant flame build. I thought that was a nice touch, but yeah, it's really not a heavy investment, and it's just purely powerful and fun. So, there we go, everybody. Giant's flame, take thee. Enjoy.
like if you have, well, enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more so you don't miss future tips, tricks, builds, funny bits, guides, all of that good stuff. Consider supporting this channel's existence and keeping it going on Patreon down below. It does mean the absolute world. Until we meet again, a good one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.